Hey guys, Franco from Your Guitar Academy. On this video, we're learning how to play Bright Lights by Gary Clark Jr. And it sounds like this. Right, so um, before we dive into it, remember to like and subscribe to our channel as well as click on the link below to see a full write-up for this lesson. Um, so, bright lights, we're going to have three different parts. We're going to have the main riff that I started with. Um, then we're going to have a look at the intro melodic line, the kind of lead part he's playing. And the first small solo that I've played at the end. Um, okay, so before that, remember that um, the, you don't know it, so don't remember it. Just know that the key is A minor. Um, the first chord we're playing is A minor 7. So A minor 7, usually, you have probably learn it that way, which is with the first finger barring fret number 5, and the third finger, the ring finger, playing fret number 7 of the A string. Now that shape is great, it is an A minor 7, but we are going for that one with the thumb playing the low E string, the first finger barring fret number 5 from the D string on, and we're muting the A string, so we get... Um, I know some of you don't like playing with the thumb, I have to say on that song, it is probably easier to do so. So if you're thinking about giving it a try, today's probably the right day. Um, you could play it with the regular shapes, it's doable. But I'm going to go for that one. So M on a 7. Now we're going to play um, that chord for one bar, so four beats, almost. Um, and the rhythm goes like this. So what I'm doing is, my hand is going down all the time on the beats and the off beats. So it goes one and two and three and four, all the time. Down, 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 down. Now what I'm doing is, I'm playing the chord on the beat, so. And I'm playing the root note of that chord, which is the note I'm playing with the thumb, on the offbeat. So it goes one and two and three and four. Okay, let's do that super slowly. One and two and three and four. So it is tricky because you have to separate the thumb and the first finger to play two different sounds. That's why the bar chord is not ideal. Um, it's, it's super important at this stage when you're learning these kind of songs to be able to know when to start a chord and to make it sound like you want it to sound like, but also when to mute a chord, when to stop the sound of it. Uh, and something I see a lot with beginners, they're really struggling to know when to lift the fingers up, but that's the key. When you lift your finger up, the chord is off. That's it. The note you're playing is off. So it goes one and two and three and four and that's, that's the whole thing really. If you manage to get that, the rest of the song is pretty easy. Now what I'm doing is one and two and three and four and... And that chord here is the second chord we need. And that's pretty much all we need for the song. That chord is an A7 sus4, which means that basically it's an A7, A dominant 7, but we don't have a third, we've got a fourth instead. So what I'm doing is the same shape as A minor 7, but the ring finger, the third finger, is playing on the G string fret number 7. And what I'm doing is I'm playing that chord on the off beat after beat number 4, so the very last strum we're doing on that bar, and I'm doing a hammer on, so it goes 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... Right, I'm not strumming that one anymore, it's just a hammer on. One and two and three and four and... 
And then I'm gonna to stick to that chord, the A7 sus4, <coughs> sorry, for a bar as well. And I'm gonna do the same exact pattern. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And to go back to A minor seven, following the same pattern we've learned <coughs> on A minor seven, on the last off beat of that bar, we're gonna remove the, the ring finger. It's gonna do a pull off to the A minor seven. So we're constantly looping these two chords that way. So let's do it super slowly. One and two and three and four. Hammer on. And two and three and four. Pull off. One, sorry, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Right? So it's always that. So your hand is not moving that much. So you can really focus on lifting the fingers up when you need to. On the first beat of each bar, I tend to play the full Monty. I tend to play root note and chord together. So instead of having one and two and three, I get one and, oh sorry, one, ah, sorry. One and two and three and four. Just, it's just a nice way to create dynamic during the song. Um, that's pretty much it. If I play with the big muff here, um, the same thing, exactly the same thing. Right? And that's the main riff of the song, and that riff sounds amazing. Now, after that, he's playing on the intro a melodic line which goes. And then there's a second part. So again, we're in the same key, so we're in the key of A minor. So we're playing over the, the A minor pentatonic scale. We are starting on shape number five of the A minor pentatonic scale, which is... Um, if you don't know that shape, don't worry, you can still learn the song and you can still learn this intro. So we're starting with the third finger slide, sliding, sorry, from fret number three of the low E string to fret number five. That's the first note we're hitting. Then three and five on the A string. And we're gonna bend that third finger, that A string on, on the fifth fret. We're gonna bend it a full tone. Which is a pretty tough bend if you're getting into it. So if you put everything together, sliding from three to five, three, five on the A string and the bend. And it's a very slow bend. So if I kick the distortion on. I'm really taking my time on that bend. Um, and at the end of that bend, while you're bending, if you can, try to add a bit of vibrato so it sounds. So essentially a vibrato when you're doing a bend like that is just bending more or less. That's it. And trying to do it quickly. Um, so the first line. We're there. And then we're going back to our original position from that bend. But as we're going back, we're going to pick that string twice. So it goes. Okay, as I'm going back. And as soon as I'm back to my original position, I do um, I play fret number three of the A string. All right, so let's put everything together. The full bend. Finishing on three. And then I'm gonna finish that lick with fret number five of the low E string with the ring finger. 
Okay, so everything together. Small detail, when you're doing that, that fret number three on the A string, you can bend it a little to sound sound a bit off because you want you want it to sound pretty badass. So if you turn the distortion on. That was the bend. And I'm adding vibrato on the last note we're playing, which is A, it's the root note. It's the key of the song. Um, so yeah, that small bend, very important. If, you, if you're getting confident with the, with the lick, try to, to add it. It's gonna sound really nice with the overdrive. Um, and that's it, that's the first, the first lick. The second one is exactly the same thing, except at the end, he's finishing with another A. So he's playing. That's the octave of the last note we've played on the first lick. Uh, that octave is on fret number seven of the D string. Okay, still A. And now that seven belongs to shape number one of the pentatonic scale. Cool, let's put everything together, the two licks together. Second one. And that's the intro lick. Sounds really good. Um, okay, now let's look at the first solo. So the first solo, uh, we're still in the same key, still in A minor, still using the pentatonic scale, but this time we're on shape number one of the pentatonic scale. This one you may know. Uh, I'll show you if you don't. Okay, so A minor, shape number one of the pentatonic scale. Um, again, if you don't know that shape, learn it. It's amazing, but uh, you can still follow the instructions I'm gonna give you and you'll be fine. Um, and the lick sounds like this. Okay, so we've got, we've got four different parts. The first part, we're starting on A. It's the same note we finished um, the intro lick with. So it's fret number seven of the D string. Then we move up the scale with the first finger on fret number five of the G string. Fret number seven of the same string. Five of the B string. Then five of the G string. And seven of the G string. So we've got. Now a trick that I use is because we're playing five so much between the strings um, G and B, my first finger is actually doing a small bar over these two strings. So I don't have to move too much because I'm lazy. Don't know if you can see that. Let me put my middle finger away. Right. That's the first lick of that, that lead. Uh, the second one. We start exactly the same way as we started the first one. So seven of the D string, five of the G string, uh, seven of the G string, sorry. Five again of the B string, and then five again on the G string. And this time we finish on seven, the same that we started with, seven on the D string. Okay, let me do it slowly. Same thing, my first finger is barring fret number five because I'm lazy. Let's put uh, these two licks together, the first one. Adding a bit of vibrato on, on this note because we're staying there. Second one. Same thing, vibrato. Uh, the third lick is exactly the same as the, as the first one, which is really convenient. First. Second, third, okay? You know uh, almost the whole thing now. The last, 
the last bar of that solo is so I'm literally just going up the scale, up the shape number one of the pentatonic scale, starting from fret number eight of the B string. And if you don't know that scale, I'm doing eight on the B string, five on the B string, uh, seven of the G string, one, oh, sorry, first finger on fret number five of the G string again, and finishing on A again because that's our root note. Five, seven, five, seven. Okay, let's put everything together. First one. Second. Third. And the fourth. Right, with a bit of overdrive. Sorry. And that's it for the first solo of that song. Now, there's a bridge part um, right before the second solo of the song. And the bridge goes, um, I'll do it with the overdrive to show off a little. We're still in the same key, uh, still starting on A minor seven, and we're still starting that chord with the same pattern we did on the riff back when I showed that to you. So we do, one and two and then instead of carrying on like we did we're gonna do one and two and a three so my hand is doing down 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 up, down okay let's do that super slowly one and two uh, no, sorry one and two and a three right and then we do a push which is a push a no, not a push. A push is when you play a chord before you should, if that makes sense. It's, it feels early. Uh, and the push is with a D major chord. So I'm using an A major shape bar chord. You could use a, a power chord. And that D major is on fret number five, first finger on fret number five of the A string. And then I'm barring with my pinky over there, fret number seven. Now you could play it that way that way. There's a lot of different ways of playing it, but that's a D major. So what I'm doing is one and two and a three and four and one and two and a three four and. Okay, so let's put the overdrive. One and two and a three four and one and two and a three four and and that's how he creates a different vibe for the next solo he's about to play. Now the next solo, I didn't want to do it on this video because this video was more about the main riff and the main section of the song. Um, if you feel like you want to learn that solo, just leave a comment below and I'll be happy to teach it. Um, okay, I'll see you in another video. See you, bye-bye.